We are Popcorn, Piss, and Vinegar, giving you a raw take on movies, television, and pop culture. My name's Chris. I'm Scott. JB4 in the house. All right, let's kick this thing off. Um, the trailers. Did you guys see the trailer for Gifted? No. The new uh, X-Men series that's coming no. to Fox. Do, do yourself a favor. Don't watch it. All right. Very yeah, good. I mean, it's not on. good? Uh, dude, it's, it's just generic. And I mean, it's another thing, man, where it's just a... I don't know. You guys getting like sick of oversaturation and like yes. and, like TV now for superhero shows? I am. Yeah, yeah. I, I I think actually Scott's so far ahead of the curve. He's tired of being tired. I am. He's tired of the being tired of the oversaturation. I am. <laughs> yeah, I, I, dude. I, it's it's another goddamn thing that I can't keep up with. And I mean, you gotta yeah. like you, you have to basically you know hit me between the eyes to really. To really push me to watch something, so yeah, like man, that, American is, Gods is I don't off see, the chain good. That's what I hear. I hear it's very good. Oh my God, I haven't I, seen I, it yet. I didn't see this in the news, but did y'all see the trailer, the teaser for uh, War of the Planet of the Apes? Yes, I didn't see the teaser because the full trailer comes out tomorrow. So I'm, I, I only, I, I'm, I'm over t- trailers of trailers. They I only, mi- I only bring it up <laughs> for the fact that they're, they're hinting that this is just in itself a trilogy. This is yeah. a trilogy, and that after this, like Charlton Heston does a, a voiceover from the original film, does a voiceover it's not and they, from the original. Well, film, whatever. But yeah, uh, and they start. See, John corrected me. They start <laughs> uh, throwing in like old scenes and old footage and in new footage. Basically, what I'm saying is this is probably going to lead us up to Planet of the Apes. Cool. I mean, hey, that that's that's awesome, man. I mean, I got no problem with it being a trilogy. I mean, look, if if you can continue to make good movies, make good movies, but. If the producers sit back and they say, well, you know, this is all we can do with it, and this is the best it's going to be, and we made a really good movie, and we're not going to sit here and try to shit the bed further with the franchise, we'll end it here on a high note. I'm, I'm totally cool and with I, that. I like it because the re- whenever they reboot, if they, in fact, reboot Planet of the Apes, they've, they've let us, they've held our hand for three movies Yeah, to yeah. give it that. Cool, so we don't have to review the trailer next week. Awesome. There you go. So, <laughs> thanks, Scott. Anytime. All right, um, yeah, goddamn, I hate spoilers. All right, Doug Lyman <laughs> reveals why he left Mr. Gambit. Eggs. He says he couldn't find a way to personally connect to the material. Lyman directed Tom Cruise in The Edge of Tomorrow and will be moving on to Justice League Dark for Warner Brothers. Really? Doug Lyman's doing du- Justice League He's Dark? He's doing Justice League Dark. That, that says something when the guy who made Jumper says, I can't connect with the story or the character. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean... I mean, uh, there it is. I mean, I I, I don't know. I, I don't think I, I don't think that Gambit movie's ever getting made. And that's I don't uh, think so. That's yeah, fine. I think I, I'm starting to lean uh, team not John on this. <laughs> so I thought for sure it'd be it'd be underway, but uh, apparently, nah, uh, I, I don't think I don't think they can get it together for whatever reason. I mean, it's a real '90s centric character, and I think that that might be part of the problem too. Yes, yeah. Sure. Yeah, you know, yeah, and I mean that's that's another thing too. With is um, dude, uh, if ugh, they just that, go down on the bayou, shit. don't get me random. Look, if, if you're not from New Orleans, look, we are from here, you know, and yeah. we see shit like that, and it always pisses us off. So it's terrible, and I'm sure that like I mean my my uh, my girlfriend, she is very Cajun, and, and she I'm don't sure, even talk like that. I'm sure when she watches that movie, she'll be like, "What the <laughs> fuck are they doing?" <laughs> So, not like what the fuck, Shaft? She won't even say it like that. Yeah, when you take the movie The Water Boy as a personal <laughs> insult, I don't really think that you know. I really don't think that she's going to have a whole lot of love for this movie. Uh, I mean, so. I, I don't. Know. I mean, isn't doesn't Channing Tatum have like a strip club here or something? Yeah, well, he's, he's got, got a, a bar. He's he, got a bar. He, okay. Yeah, he's got. The, uh, I think it's called the Saint, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I think he owns that. So I mean, that doesn't I, mean you got to make a movie here. No, mean I mean, can, I, I know, but his dad's from here. And it still doesn't change the fact that the character, not him, not any, not his family, that character, Gambit, it's not going to work. Not in 2017. Well, I mean, not if you literally translate him from the comic as basically, you know, the big easy from a beefcake telepath or whatever. But, you know, I mean, Logan kind of deconstructed the myth and there, there... There are no bad ideas, just bad execution. So I'm, I'm, apparently I they don't. That. They, they don't. They don't have a, a good execution. So fair enough. Well, we just talked about Justice League Dark, and we all thought that Guillermo del Toro, Guillermo del Toro, was on board for this thing. Yeah. but he's out of everything. These yeah, days, he's huh? like out of everything he wanted to do because he says he wants to move on to original works, and like he's not really into this whole licensing thing. 
But what else comes as a shock also, he failed to campaign for a second Hellboy sequel, but Hellboy creator Mike Mignola has announced that a reboot will be coming soon that will star David Harbour of Stranger Things as the titular character. Uh, Game of Thrones' Neil Marshall will um, be in the director's chair. Uh, actor Jeffrey Tambor, he played the guy who was like the, the you know, from Arrested Development and, yeah. and the Larry Sanders show. No touching. No touching. He played the guy who was the, uh, like, kind of leader of the government agency that, that, that funded right. Hellboy and his team. This motherfucker went to Twitter and, like, blasted the creator <laughs> of Hellboy, basically telling him, fuck you, you have no loyalty to Guillermo del Toro or... Or um, Ron Perlman. Now they campaigned like pretty hard to, to do a third movie, yeah. but I mean, for is, is I mean, I enjoy Hellboy. I think both of them are yeah, good movies. They are. But from what I hear from the real faithful fans, it's not a very faithful translation of that character. Um, they say that it's kind of it's kind of a lot more tongue in cheek than than what's in the comic books. And naturally, you know, the guy uh, Mignola who direct who, who created Hellboy. He mm-hmm. said they're going into the direction of the R-rated territory, as you see now with like movies like Deadpool and Logan. So maybe it'll be something that's uh, you know, that'll hit closer to the mark. But I mean, if you can't make a lot of money making two Hellboy movies, which I'm sure this is what the issue is, why mm-hmm. they said pass on the third one is that it didn't make huge money. Um, you know, I mean, I would assume that what makes you think that you can market something entirely new that didn't work for two other movies. Uh, maybe the tone will sell it, you uh, know? I, yeah, I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, David Harbour, you know, he played Coop on Stranger Things, and I mean... Mm-hmm. He'd be good. He, yeah, I mean, he's been tapped for a couple of things now in the realm of the comic book movies, but I mean, I, I, I don't know, man. It's kind of a kind of a weird property, so... Yep, we'll see. I guess we'll just see what happens. Jury's out. <laughs> With shows like Will and Grace, Full House, and The Gilmore Girls all getting reunions, USA has announced that they will revive their original series, Psych, in form of a two-hour movie that will air on the network at the end of this year. All of the original stars will return, and it will pick up three years after the series finale. I, that, Excellent. I love Psych, man. I love man. Psych. It's it, a great it was, show. Yeah, it was funny, man. Really funny did you show. Always, did you always see the pineapples? No. no uh, I th- I, yeah, I was watching it the other night, as a matter of fact. It, it comes on, uh, I don't know, my TV or one of those off-brand channels, and uh, they showed, like, uh, you know, old episodes of Psych. I was like, I'm in. Huh. That's, that was I'll a funny every show. Time. I always yeah. liked how when the uh, when, when, when Psych lead character, whenever his buddy got afraid, they would always show the spinning chair. I always thought that was so hilarious. I loved all the 80s references. Yeah, that yeah. was always. Well, man, we're 80s kids, man, so of course we love that shit. I, I want to rewatch the uh, Twin Peaks episodes. Oh, yeah. Because Twin Peaks is coming on. I don't know if that's in the news or not. Yeah, I think that's starting soon, huh? Yeah, I think the next weekend. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have to get on it. I'd like to rewatch. I haven't seen those in years. I know, right? But but hey, thanks to you, man. I went and watched Blade Runner. You know, and, uh, Sweet. Yeah. Wow. Really, really fucking sweet movie. I was, yeah, I was about to say, did you enjoy it? Or? Oh, I loved it. Was this a loan? Did you loan it to him? No, no. No, I streamed it through right. nefarious means. But... but um. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I watched it, and man, I, I tell you, I watched like a uh, like an HD copy of it. Mm-hmm. Dude, it is amazing how much that movie holds up. I know. You know, it, it, it really is true, man. I mean, yeah, the, the the technology, not so much. As far as like the technology that the characters use, it's definitely like a 1980s view of what, you know, shit would look like in 2019. Yeah. But as far as like the cityscapes mm-hmm. and the visuals of the movie, I mean, yeah. special effects wise, it holds up with anything today. Yeah, it's it's fucking awesome. Great movie. All right, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two is well on its way to doing one billion dollars mm. worldwide in ticket sales, and many have questioned if Marvel Studios has secretly reacquired the Fantastic Four rights since the Watchers appear in the movie. Kevin oh. Feige has clarified. That it hasn't happened, and even though Marvel's cosmic universe has strong ties to the Fantastic Four, there are many characters within the mythology that's rights are shared by both studios. Hmm. So I would imagine the Fantastic Four gets the biggies. They get Galactus. You know, they get those characters, you know, that are kind of like the... Because the, that's where the cosmic universe started with Marvel. It all started with the Fantastic Four. Doctor Doom, Silver Surfer, all those kind of characters... You know, but uh, it seems that some of the stuff is 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 shared. You know, they say, okay, well, look, you can use this for your stories, but we can use it too. So, 
I, I if you're talking about the same interview that I read, Kevin Feige also for the first time w- tipped his hat to 20th Century Fox. Yeah, mm-hmm. he was just like, you know, they're doing their thing and it's very successful, and Marvel wins with that. Yeah, you know, it's right. a Marvel property. So yeah, no doubt. And I mean, we've said it multiple times. I mean, man, yeah, they could get back the X Men and all that shit and everything, but man, they're they are so jam packed with what they're doing. I'd hate to see them have to kind of like release that entire storyline into their universe and make all that uh-huh. shit work. You know, I mean... That's impossible. I, I it doesn't know. even work in their own universe. Yeah, I mean, dude, you're talking about a micromanaging fucking nightmare. Now you have oh, to yeah. add in the whole, like, mutant storyline. That's on a thing all to its own. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's best to separate it and let people make good movies. It's, I mean, Fox, it can be argued that half of their shit's bad, but they got a lot of good stuff, man. I yeah. mean, Did like, you see Logan. That, that James Gunn interview where... Uh, he was talking about Stan Lee being the FedEx person. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. said he said he fucked up the continuity. Yeah, the continuity. Wait, what? He huh? was a. It movie takes place in 2014. Stan Lee was a FedEx guy in Civil War. Civil War takes place in 2016. After. So it couldn't have. Yeah. Unless, unless space time, time continuum. Right. Yeah. Unless yeah. time is relevant. And then I mean, that's matter. the extreme. But James Gunn even owned up to it. He said, "Yeah, yeah I kind of fucked that up." And you know, if I could go back and do it again, I would have referenced to an earlier movie. Yeah. Which, oh. in my opinion, what they should have did was they should have said, "Okay, what is Stan Lee's cameo in the first Iron Man movie?" And he should have referenced that one just to show you that he was yeah. there from the entire yeah. beginning. I think that would should have done cool. the Hulk. Oh, the Hulk. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, e- either one of them would have been fine. So, yeah, remember that time that I was a soda bottle worker? You know, I was working yeah. at a soda bottle factory. All right, the first blockbuster bomb of 2017 will be Guy Ritchie's King Arthur. Mm, mm, mm. It's, a um, it's, it's been reviled by critics, but it's been loved by fans. But Ritchie's moved on to talking about his next project, which will be Aladdin for Disney. He says that he's still trying to figure out the property and has a determined whether it's going to be a musical or not. Says he took on this movie because his kids love the property. So, well, it's a good thing he lined that up. Yeah, right. I've read reviews for King Arthur. I'm, I'm going to see it tomorrow night, and I mean, I want to try to catch it before. I, I think movies like that, you, you got to have the theater experience with movies. Sure. And from what the fans' perspective is, man, like you look at Rotten Tomatoes, like it's like a 27%. <laughs> but yeah. you look at the fan meter, the fan meter is like 84%. Wasn't it the so, same oh, okay. one for Transformers as well? Uh, same thing for Batman versus Superman. Yeah. Same same yeah. thing, you know. So I mean, just doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. But yeah. Batman versus Superman is bad. <laughs> um, I missed this one. Uh, James Gunn was asked why Jeff Goldblum was put into the dancing credits of Guardians of the Galaxy, to which he replied, "The Grandmaster." who Jeff is playing, is the brother of the Collector that was played by Benicio Del Toro. So I figured it was a fun way to kind of connect the movies. They also had outtakes of him dancing, and they decided, well, we have outtakes of him dancing, let's put him in. Yeah. You know. So, I mean, cool little connection thing. Yeah. Proving once again that uh, James Gunn is on his game. So, all right. uh, Early reviews of Alien Covenant have not been kind to director uh, Sir Ridley Scott. But he says he's in the process of writing the next movie and plans to film it in the next 14 months. Damn. Um, he also said in the same interview, he said, the uh, bad thing about being a director is that I watch Michael Fassbender. He's able to do four movies a year, and I can only do one. So huh. I guess that's kind of his statement that, you know, he's only got a little bit more time. But, I mean, dude, that dude's got an incredibly storied career. Right. I mean, the shit he's done. Yeah, and when, you know, one of your movies is Assassin's Creed... <laughs> Maybe maybe he should slow down a little bit. Yeah, right. Exactly. Want to walk that back, Mike? Yeah. So, mm. and and I've actually read mm. middling to positive reviews. I haven't read too many that shit on the movie. They're just like, eh. There's some amazing points, but there's parts that could be better. That's this that's is, the vibe I'm getting. Basically, every review I've read is is that first hour is heart in your throat. Second hour, your heart just kind of like slowly drifts to your asshole. That's okay. kind of what I've heard through everything. So, I don't know. I mean, I'm going to go see it, dude. I love the Alien yeah. franchise. I don't like Part 3 and Part 4, but I like Prometheus. Or the Alien versus Predator. Yeah. Movies, you know, I watched that. Them. And? Rid- eh, whatever. Ridley Scott's Alien, Ridley Scott's Prometheus, and James Cameron's Alien. I'm, I'm in. And I mean, it's as long yeah. as either of those two guys are involved in it, I'm, I'm in. I'm going to see it. Yes. So. FXX has ordered a Deadpool adult animated series, and dude, Donald and Steven Glover will be the showrunners. How about that? 
That's fucking wow. crazy, That's man. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, I mean, it is pretty cool. I mean, everything Deadpool does is hilarious, you know? So, I mean, to put it on a show, you know, yeah. is, 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 uh, is, 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 I, I mean, it's, it's a good marketing thing, but I mean, dude, Donald Glover, that's such a, such an hey, odd choice. You ever choice, watched Atlanta? Huh? No, I've never seen it, but I mean, I know he's a funny dude. He's a funny dude. You know what I mean? He's a, and, and he's a funny writer. Like he, well, and he's he also a good does, writer. And he, and he also can do like drama and heavy stuff. Like Atlanta is not yuck, yuck funny. You know, it's, there's, it's a dramedy. Yeah. You know? Well, I, yeah, more comedy than drama, but there are moments where you're just like, that wasn't funny. Oh, right. Okay. Well, I mean, as far as the, great. from what they say, but Thirty it, Rock is funny. Yeah. Well, this piece of news that I that I read it says that they've basically taken Atlanta's whole like production and writing team and moved them over to this Deadpool thing. Holy shit! I wonder so, if that means like Atlanta's on ice hiatus. forever. Hmm. I mean, fuck these guys, man. They multitask. I mean, it's all about making that money and staying relevant in the industry, man. So, yeah. You know, there, there's a. But plenty of guys, man, wear, wear plenty hats and juggle a lot, man. Look at J.J. Abrams. I mean, true. That that dude does a lot of shit. He doesn't have a rap career, though. That's right. That is true. Talk about juggling a lot of hats. Diane Lane was on Watch What Happens with Andy <laughs> Cohen and was asked if she could say anything about Justice oh, League and crazy. would it be better than the Avengers. She said no and no, which sent Marvel tards into a gleeful frenzy and put delusional DC fans on the defensive. She later said that she missed uh, she misspoke and meant she can't say anything about the project. Um, and pretty much anybody with common sense understood that from the beginning, you know. Right. So I mean, yeah, they asked her that question. She said no and no, basically meaning, look, I can't say shit about anything. I mean, we you know, we signed NDAs out the ass. Right. And the same, um, the same chick that played um, the the leader of the uh, Sovereign in um, Guardians of the Galaxy Two, the woman that they had painted gold, mm-hmm. the uh, the queen. Right. She said, "I'm happy the movie's out because now I can finally talk about it." She said, "Like I couldn't even talk about what kind of hairstyle my character had." That's how crazy the NDAs are for doing these type of movies. Wow. So. Yeah, I mean, I, Diane Lane. I mean, look, like you know, that first trailer. That's me on the trailer. Yeah, I, I really wish she wouldn't have misspoke because, like, you have to read the comment sections and all this shit, it's, and it's just so fucking stupid. Staring at pot, hilarious. it's awesome. X Men: New Mutants has taken a huge step forward by casting two well-known stars in the roles of Magic and Wolvesbane. Magic will be played by Anna uh, Taylor Joy of Split. She played the little lead right. female oh. character in Split. All right, and. Macy Williams of Game of Thrones, who plays oh, Arya yeah. Stark, she'll play Wolvesbane. So she'll join her sister, you know, her uh, on-screen sister from Game of Thrones, the uh, girl that plays oh, San- Sansa. Yeah. yeah, she plays uh, Sansa. Sansa Stark plays uh, plays Phoenix, Phoenix in the other X Men movies. So right, but I'm still kind of in the dark as to does this take what timeline does this take place in? Is this the <clears throat> '90s almost, timeline? Is this the matter with the X or new mutants it, it, X-Men universe you know well I mean it, it, I mean I'm not really so much worried about the Lo- I think the Logan one is a story on to its own but my question is is that is it the Deadpool storyline or is it the X-Men Prime storyline I don't know I guess we'll we'll see as more develop so we'll see I don't think they thought it through so <laughs> I'm just saying that I'm could be highly record. possible all right, Star Wars Rebels has done an incredible job of having actors to return um, to return to voice the characters they portray on screen. So far, Anthony Daniels, Billy D. Williams, Genevieve O'Reilly, Forrest Whitaker, and James Earl Jones have returned to voice their characters: C-3PO, Lando, Mon Mothma, Saw Gerrera, and Darth Vader. The latest rumor is Ian McDermott will also lend his voice to return as Emperor Palpatine in the fourth and final ser- uh, season Perfect. of Star Wars Rebels. Yeah, right. Uh, dude, they just up the quality, man. I-, I can't say it enough. If you haven't, if you're a Star Wars fan and you don't watch Rebels, man, just fucking get on it. Yeah, you're missing out. Go, yeah. go buy the seasons on Blu-ray. You know, support Disney. They need money. Yeah. You know, but uh, I mean, dude, go just go buy it. it it's rated it's, five stars, dude. It's yeah, rated five stars, <laughs> courtesy of the five star general. But yeah, I mean, dude, go check it out. It's a fantastic show. Thank you. All right, The Rock is rumored to star in his own film as Black Adam for Warner and is also rumored to play the character, um, play the main antagonist in Man of Steel. The Rock realizes that Shazam needs to be part of the story to introduce the character, and he's recommended that Army Hammer should get the role. I'm in for that. Um, I'm in for it, too. Man, I I went and saw that movie Free Fire that he plays one of the lead characters in. Dude, he's he's got a presence, man. He's... 
He played the uh, Russian agent, the man from Uncle. The man yeah. from Uncle. Played in the Lone Ranger, which sucked. But I mean, dude, I mean, he's he's got. It's not his fault. Yeah, man. I mean, he's got. He a, played the Winklevoss twins. That's right. He's got screen. Cr- I mean, yeah. I mean, he's got he's got presence, man. And I and yeah. but I mean, he's also rumored to play Green Lantern in the Green oh, Lantern Corps. So I didn't know that. Yeah, mm. it'll be interesting to see how all that plays out. Isn't uh, doesn't Shazam become an adult? Like he's a little he's a kid. little boy, and he says the magic name and the magic name. He, Shazam, right? He turns into the it's into an acronym the, of all the Greek gods, right? Right. I think something like that. So I just know Z is Zeus. Yeah, I mean, he uh, he does the Shazam thing, and uh, and I mean, Army Hammer, dude, is like fuck. He's like like six foot six or some shit. Damn. So I mean, he's a really tall fucking guy. So I mean, if you're gonna get somebody to play a character like that, you know, I mean, why not? Why not? I, as much as I know that this movie will happen, I'm just taken aback that it will. I just, I, I don't. <laughs> I, it, I guess if The Rock weren't involved in this film, I don't think it would. be. I 100 percent agree with you, and I don't yeah. even and I don't even still think this is a guarantee. I don't either. Well, you I know what's weird is, is like, like talk talk. Yeah, the, but uh, that being said, it it was a 70s show for I mean it had I like two or it. three seasons. Yeah, yeah, so did I. I, I, just, I mean, of all the of all the properties, that I, it's a weird one. And if this and I don't want to be that guy, but so if this the, were Marvel. I wouldn't even. This wouldn't even be a discussion for me. But the fact that DC doesn't have the track record and they are literally putting all their eggs in one basket, I kind of. I don't know. I don't know. I, these are the things that I've noticed coming out of the Warner camp, and we've talked about this shit like you know, just ad nauseum. But I mean, it, it, here's what it comes down to: you don't see a lot of action from them right now. I mean, pretty much the only thing that are on the plate is Wonder Woman, which we'll talk about that today for the show topic. Oh, cool. And, um, and Justice League. And, no, no, and, and, and um, Aquaman. That's the only two things oh. that like are like in production, filming, good to go. You don't really hear about all this other shit. I mean, it's like I said, man, they just kind of sit in a room and they just announce shit. You know, I mean, that's all they do. But Scott had said something maybe, a, I don't know, maybe about a month or so ago, and, and I'm having a tendency to kind of agree with him with this. <clears throat> I'm thinking what's happening is, is that they're going to wait and see the numbers that Wonder Woman does. They're also going to see what it does critically. Mm-hmm. I think as time goes on, as time does, they're going to do a big rollout with the Batman franchise, and all yeah. of these other characters are going to be reduced to cameos instead of having their own movies. And I think that Batman is going to be the anchor character to carry the whole franchise. Yeah, I mean, he should be. He should be, but I, I would like to see a, a Flash movie with um, Zemeckis directing. Yeah, I, me too, man. I'd love to see that too, but I mean, if these other two movies shit the bed, I think that they're going to back way the fuck up. I don't think I think Wonder Woman's going to do very, very well, and it's been getting good reviews. I've heard. Yeah, well, that's on our topic today, so we'll uh, okay. we'll get into that right shut after the these up, last liar. two pieces of news. All right, um, frequent Quentin Tarantino and Kevin Smith collaborator Michael Parks has passed away at age seventy-seven. Parks played Texas Ranger Earl McGraw in From Dust Till Dawn, yeah. Kill Bill, and both segments of Grindhouse. He also played in Django Unchained. Will Smith, um, with Smith, he starred in Red State and Tusk. Early in his career, he worked with Henry Fonda, Anthony Quinn, and starred in dozens of cult movies. He was at one time touted as Hollywood's next big thing, and even though he never reached those heights, he brought a rugged authenticity to everything he played. So, yeah, R.I.P. Michael he did Parks. It. And uh, this one was kind of a, a big one for me. Like I was kind of shocked, man. Is our uh, Powers Booth? Yeah, uh, passed away at sixty eight. And man, what a what just what a, an incredible talent, man. I mean, um, he's like a chameleon, man. He's just he's starred in so many different types of movies and genres. I mean, just I feel positively capital. Well, yeah, man. I mean, look that that drawl, that that voice, and man, like he looks like he walked out of like a nineteen forties movie. He's got that that kind of old school traditional just look. Intensity too. I liked him in oh, Emerald yeah, Forest. I, I mean, I don't know if anyone remembers Emerald that movie, Forest but. frailty. Um, I mean, even starting some of the shit that we talk about. I mean, he played uh, he played Senator Rourke in Sin City, and yeah. he was also one of the uh, kind of like heads of state, you know, the Department of Defense guys in um, the Avengers. And that oh, yeah, role, yeah, that yeah. role carried over to Agents of Shield. Oh, yeah. So he portrayed that character in both the films and the and the uh, television series. Um, this, the roles that I remember him best for was uh, Colonel Andrew Tanner. That was who he played in Red Dawn. Red Dawn um, and Tombstone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Red Dawn and Tombstone. Curly Bill. I, I would say that me being an '80s kid, man, that's probably like the 
the two uh, the two biggest roles that I remember. It looks for. like he cleaned up. I, I still have not seen Deadwood, but they've been posting clips of him on there, and he looks absolutely insane. Yeah. So I and make it, it's made me want to see it, and, and that's it. I mean, he's it's just to go back to that man. He starred in such a wide range of shit. He starred in a lot of westerns. He was in like a, kind of like a lot of like um nineteen forties noir stuff. You know, like Philip Marlowe. He was in that. Mm-hmm. Um, he played in the uh, I forget the name of the uh, of the book series, but it was kind of a short lived series on HBO. Um, Lovecraft. He played this. Huh. Uh, he played this detective named Lovecraft, and it's a like a 1940s noir that. series. <laughs> but the thing with it is, is that everybody in the world has magic powers. Yeah, and huh. he played Lovecraft in the first movie, and then in the second series, it was actually Dennis Hopper that that played oh. him in the in the second okay. movie. So uh, yeah, I mean. You know, uh, R.I.P. Powers Booth. I'll, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll definitely miss that cat. He's in a bunch of good shit. He, he was. You are listening to Popcorn, Piss, and Vinegar. Television. Movies. Pop culture. Keep up with the latest news from Luke Skywalker all the way to Batman. From Netflix to the CW. And all the news in between. Please subscribe and rate us on iTunes. Or stream our episodes from ppvguys.com. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter at ppvguys. Check out our friends Not Real Radio at notrealradio.com for our segment, Not Real Movie News. Should you listen to more? Yes. Will you agree? Maybe. Jury's out. Indeed. Thank 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 you for listening and action. All right, talking about our show topic, it's going to be Wonder Woman. Um, the first critical review has come out for Wonder Woman. It was given four stars. Ooh, out of they five? They say it is... No, get four out of four. Only, oh, you, four deal, only four. you and I deal with five stars. Other people yeah. give four-star reviews to movies, but we're the only five-star motherfuckers the four, in the I world. I want to know this four-star general person. Who's he? Yeah. Uh, Roger Ebert, Gene Siskel, <laughs> Richard Roper. You know, those unknown motherfuckers. Rookies. So, you know us. We're the only five-star people. As in, you know, hey, look, go to our podcast page on, on iTunes and give us five stars, please. Five stars. Yeah. Five stars and write a review, and also for Not Real Radio and for uh, Scary Thoughts. But moving right along, Wonder Woman, man, I don't know. It's just so weird, man. It's like this movie seems like it's it's been like ridiculously under-marketed. I mean, I see it on social media that. all over the fucking place. I don't know but about man. ridiculously. There was a stretch where it kind of fell out. I, I personally feel like, and maybe we'll hear after the fact, but I, I have a hunch that uh, they knuckled down and did some reshoots and uh, really kind of went to the edit room with swords. Because you remember initially there were leaks saying that it was meandering, it was a fucked up mess. And uh, I think because of the drubbing Batman versus Superman got, I think I, they're I, like, oh shit. I feel like this movie should have came out at Christmas. Like I, I feel like yeah. it's just been so long. It has been, yeah. Wow, when's this Wonder Woman come? It's coming out. When? In June. Fuck, June. All right. I thought it was coming out in May. But, or I, thought I mean, it was that's the thing, though. But, but think of how much Guardians of the Galaxy and even Star Wars. Star Wars doesn't come out for another seven months. And how much that marketing has been rammed up our ass. Dude, Wonder Woman comes out in two fucking weeks, dude. But I, I, have, mean, seen, I have seen TV spots when I, the little TV commercials that I do watch. Yeah. I have seen TV spots, and it was a trailer for Guardians. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know that I can 100% say that they're not marketing this movie because I feel like they are. I just feel like it's been so drawn out that, you know, instead of having 10 TV spots in one week, we've had 10 TV spots and maybe, or maybe 50 TV spots in Seven 50 months, weeks. Yeah. yeah, you know, something like that. Well, I mean, the, the only reason I'm saying this is because I've sat, bless you, I've sat there and I've I've read some of the uh, some of the stuff as far as like the early predictions because a lot of the prospectors, they want to come out there and tell you how much a movie's going to make an opening weekend. And this is shit that's taken very seriously by the studios. Yeah. But then there's one thing that I read, I think it was either in Variety or Hollywood Reporter, it said that the marketing for this movie has been tame compared to other movies of its ilk. And they said as a result of that, they can't really pinpoint what the opening weekend is going to be. This is basically what they've said. It's going to make 60 to 100 million. I mean, that's... Opening weekend, you mean? Opening weekend. It's going to be 60. big... 
margin it's, there. Yeah, I mean, that's a huge margin. I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy, they came out and they said, the movie's going to open worldwide between 140 and 150 million. It did between yeah. 140 and 150 million. It sat right at 145. I think it'll. I think it'll do 100. I think it'll do fine too. I just, I and but I see what you're saying about you know the ties want to know what we're going to open at, but just open the movie. Well, uh, you just know, you out. know, there were all these uh, these t- tie-in promotions they were going to do that kind of backfired. Oh really? There, yeah, there was some uh, like like Taco Woman's Bell? no like Woman's Day oh. stamp, and um, it there was an enormous backlash with it, so mm. they had to pull it. Um, I, 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 didn't, I, didn't hear, I didn't even I, hear about that. I just it this is Wonder Woman. Like they, everyone should be excited because we're finally getting this. And if if what you said is true, well, I mean you say it's true. The the review, the four star review. That's got to say something. Like, hey, there it is. It's looking good. And to go further into the four-star review, the guy used these adjectives, which I thought was pretty cool. He said, the movie is dark, but it's World War I. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, I mean, is one of the darkest yeah. times in, 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 in our history, you know, as far as, like, a country, even yeah. in world history, you know, in modern world history. But um, also he said that it's funny, which we've never heard that about a DC movie ever. Yeah. You know, and also it's powerful. So okay. maybe the three H's that they were looking for, you know, the heroics, humor, and whatever the yep. fuck the other one was. Hip. Uh, yeah, whatever Jeff John said <laughs> their, their three H formula was, it was heroics, heroics, humor, humor and, and some other fucking nonsense. I, I, I don't know. I, I, with DC, man, like I said, I, I it, it breaks my heart because I love that franchise so much but man i mean they just haven't done well with movies uh, yeah I, I think wonder woman might uh flip the script i hope it does man yeah i mean it it it, it looks fun like it, it does look dark but it also looks like it's not fetishizing the darkness which is what Zack snyder did it looks like darkness is an oppressive force and she's gonna kick its fucking ass and that's what i want to see i like that we don't know like and you know how I feel about it, but I haven't seen any Easter eggs on uh, the villains or anything like that moving forward past just a, a store a World War One storyline. That's all I know about this film. Yeah, I know the beginning sort of. I know the World War One sort of situation, mm-hmm. but I don't know how it relates to now. How it relates to uh, you know Justice League or Batman or any of this. I don't know how she ties into any of that inside of this movie which i'm happy about yeah i mean going back to the to the uh, kind of like you know i guess theme or you know our kind of color of this movie so to speak i mean everything that i've seen in the trailers all the shit that takes place in themiscara is all like beautiful and bright and right. colorful yeah mm-hmm. you know, i mean yeah you i mean you can make the argument with the armor and stuff you know everything's like dull colors well man they're they're fucking warriors man i mean they're gonna yeah. wear leather armor and shit you know, but I mean, if you sit and look right. at everything else, I mean, it's all of these real beautiful tropical locations, you know, I mean, blue water and sandy beaches and all these big, you know, kind of like cliffs and I mean, mm. all that stuff of it looks, looks, I mean, visually impressive. The only time yeah. the movie gets dark of anything that I've seen is, is the World War Two shit. World War One. Oh, the World War One shit. And also, dude, London, but London's supposed yeah. to be dark. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, it's, I mean that's like saying you know Sherlock Holmes. I mean they is say dark. it in the yeah, commercial. Well, you know that's uh, yeah, looks terrible. Yeah, is what and, she says right. or something like that. Right. Any period piece that you see that deals with London, England, it's mm-hmm. always dark and musty looking. And so dirty, I mean, yeah, yeah, and dirty. So and, I mean they so, they filled that they they fulfilled that. You what know? does Wonder Woman even? What are they? What is she? What is that movie even going up against? Um, I don't really think it's going up Nothing. against anything, really. Nothing. I mean, it's just coming off of the tail end of Guardians of the Galaxy, which in the next couple of weeks, that'll start kind of yeah. like winding down. Well, no, I mean... Our, it's, our, a, it's a perfect... I think Guardians, in my opinion, is a perfect opening act it for is. Wonder Woman. Because to me, this is it. This is the yeah. iconic... This yeah. is it. We've never seen this before. Are your wives slash daughters slash girlfriends excited about it? Oh, no. yeah. No. No? No. Nah. Yeah, I mean, no. Not really. Okay. Oh, my girlfriend. I'm excited about it. Okay. My Your girlfriend, daughter's done? We haven't we haven't gone down that road of, hey, you ready for Wonder Woman? Oh, okay. No. My girlfriend and, and even a little one, she's excited. But this movie, I told Karen this time, I said, look, 
let me, let, me, let, me, let me school you on how DC movies work. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna hold this one on the side for a little while and see if she can handle it. Because oh, there was some shit going on in Guardians. I was like, whoa. That's why we know? didn't do Guardians yeah. as a family. Right. I, I was like, ooh, let me see this yeah. one first. Before. And it's a great gag, too. But when yeah. we talk about, you know, making love and, you know. Well, I saw it the second funny. time. I saw it the second time. And, man, like, I mean, you know, oh, well, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy is the kids' movie, you know. Well, dude, Yondu sleeping with the hookers right. on, the, on, the on like, the brothel yeah, right. planet. Yeah. I was like, whoa. I, like, I... I saw it the first time, and I'm like sitting there, and I'm like, "Yeah, that that's kind of implies much." But when I saw it the second time, I didn't notice it, dude. He's sitting there zipping up his zipper. He oh, yeah. just got finished fucking. Yeah, that yeah. was. I was like, "Oh, this is maybe this is the only scene." Of course not. But it, but it just goes to show you how typical we are as as Americans, dude. You know, we get yeah. pissed off with sex scenes, you know, but it's a okay for everybody to blow the fuck out of no, each other. That was the other. Yeah. The and other I'm not Yondu talking about scenes. blowing each other like blowing each other. Right. I'm talking about blowing each, each other, other up. up. Yeah. The yeah. other Yondu scene sealed it for me. I'm like, oh, fuck. I, I, she can't come to this. Which, oh yeah, which, yeah. Which one? When he kills the whole Ravenger <laughs> plane. <laughs> oh his, yeah. <laughs> yeah right. It becomes, that was like, badass uh, though. Yeah. It's awesome. No, I, as a me, I loved it, but. Right, yeah. the same way John Wick was awesome. Right. You're not going right. to want your kid to see it. But well, you know, Wonder Woman. Yeah, I mean, with Wonder Woman, I kind of have an idea of what's coming with, with with Wonder Woman as far as like the villains and stuff are concerned. We talked about it last week, yeah. the uh, the Lady Poison character. But I haven't seen anything yet. But all of the shit that I've read it hasn't confirmed anything. But you can bet your bottom dollar it's going to probably be Ares is the main villain. That's one okay. of her big. That's a mega villain for her, and okay. Ares got a war is going to be the you know that's always Ooh. been the the thing for them. So she's gonna he's going to basically be like pushing World War One along because he loves war, right? Makes him right, stronger. right. So interesting. I'm willing to bet that's what it's going to be because Wonder Woman, man, like she's really fucking thin on the Rogues Gallery, like mm. really thin. That's why you see her tie in a lot more well in ensemble stuff because she's better at fighting team villains because her own rogues gallery is is really really slim it's kind of weak hmm. so that makes bad. sense i nah, wouldn't well, you know i don't mind team ups i mean either yeah well, and I'm and but i think that's what's going to happen eventually i think if wonder woman does well and it's got legs you're going to definitely see it franchised out i mean i yeah. think honestly i think if warner if somebody at warner has any sense and they're going to you know quote unquote slow their role I'm willing to bet somebody's going to sit back and say, well, okay, you know, we got a little ambitious. Things are fucked up. We were rough out of the gate. You know, if anything, man, if we can capitalize on our Holy Trinity, which the Holy Trinity is Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. Yeah. If we can capitalize on the on those three characters, we can pretty much cameo everybody else yeah. out. You know, and then just throw a Justice League movie out there every now and again with those three being the principal characters. I well, agree. If, if Batman will... Batman's always going to be given chances, right? Always. So, uh, yeah. I, I actually think now that I now that I'm considering it, I think working Black Adam into Superman, I think Man that Steel is, is actually smart. I don't think he's going to get the whole, his own movie. I don't think the Rock's going to get his own movie. I'm oh, sorry. yeah, I, 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 yeah, I'm with you there. There's going to be no Black Adam movie. There'll probably be no Shazam movie. It's going to be... No, oh, there'll be a Shazam nope. movie. I don't think so. Let's, I, oh, I don't think so. We'll mark the calendar. We'll see, him in, really? we'll see him in Man of Steel as... Black Adam. As Black Adam, as another... He's not going to be the main enemy because I feel like that's too weak for a Superman movie, but he'll be in the movie. I mean, Black Adam's... I, I, I think uh, if DC can super, turn... Yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah, I mean, he, he's you mega... Don't do too many villains. That's... One. One villain. Yeah. See, That's all we need. But, dude, as a Superman fan, honestly, though, man, I mean, no offense to The Rock or anything, but, dude, I don't <laughs> I don't want to see The Rock. I, it's not I don't want to see The Rock. I don't want to see Black Adam. Dude, Superman has so many fucking awesome villains. Yeah. Where's I really goddamn see... Brainiac, man? I know. I was thinking Fuck, the same dude. thing. I like Brainiac. Brian. <laughs> I call him Brian. Anyway, okay. yeah. But that's, that's what I'm... Those... He has... I mean, Lex Luthor, for God's sakes. He's still a main villain. Yeah, he's still he's a still main a, villain. He's still a main villain that everyone knows. Yeah, if we can get Michael Rosenbaum, Lex Luthor, people, I'm, I'm down to seeing that. But after this Eisenberg fucking I didn't realize disaster. he was in Guardians. Yeah, yeah, he played the crystal skin yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, but no, I mean, um, yeah, it, it, as far as, like, the DC thing's concerned, I, I don't think any of these, like, kind of, like, tertiary character movies are even going to get made unless they can really turn the curve. And, All right, so let's get back to the point real fast before we close the show out. Yeah. Do you think that the marketing for this movie was subpar? Oh, I think it was. You Me personally. Was. All right. Yeah. I don't. I don't either. I, don't. It was, I mean, there were some stumbles. I also but... feel like we probably were oversaturated. We'll get back to that. Yeah. Guardians just, you know, they overshadowed everything. Well, but I mean, it's Marvel. That's what's crazy about Marvel is, is that all of their marketing is kind of built in. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, it's... I, I don't I don't feel like I saw as much Guardians of the Galaxy 2 trailers as the first one. I felt like the first one was... Man, we must watch different TV. Like I, us. I don't know. I don't watch any TV. I pretty much kind of what I have. Everything for me is pretty and much. Neither do I. That's why it's, radio and Facebook. That's why it's you know? odd that I'm seeing commercials because I don't really watch commercials, and I'm still getting ads thrown at me. Yeah. For these films. Well, I don't know. We'll know in two weeks. All this bitch is going to perform, and of course, you'll get our <laughs> review from. PPV, uh, bitches and movie, not bitches and Gal Gadot, because she's yeah. a fucking goddess. And I was telling people today, look, uh, I really honestly don't care if the movie sucks. I just want to see her run around as Wonder Woman and beat the fuck out of everything. Yeah, I mean, the uh, fight scene is absolutely fantastic. gorgeous doing so. So yeah. I'm cool with that. All right, well, that's our episode for this week. Please check us out at ppvguys.com. You can check out previous episodes. Also, please subscribe to us on iTunes and Stitcher. And look, anywhere you can write a review for us. The five star general says, "Please, five stars he for." Don't say please. He says, "Please." Five star general don't say. The please. five star general is fucking polite. Okay, <laughs> so look, he says, "Please, five stars for PPB. Please, five stars for scary thoughts, and please, five stars for not real radio." It's a please with authority. But I will say, if you give us a one star review, that's where the general flips the script. Uh, four oh, yeah. star general is going to come yep. help him. Five star general is going to come and take a shit in your mailbox. All right. Thanks for listening and seeing.